I thank God for a safe journey to this place from the States. And it is indeed a privilege to be present in celebration of this College of Medicine building and the degree program today, August 8, 2015, here in AUP. 58 years ago, I took my pre-med in PUC by Isaac Campos, then proceeded with my medical schooling outside of PUC. I had to join the other freshman SDA medical students in asking to leave early from our last Friday afternoon classes because of the sun setting and it's Sabbath. I always want to be an S a good SDA witness. It was always a problem when exams were scheduled on Sabbaths. We had to ask for another special day to take the exams. It was a hassle. Come graduation time, the hooding program was on a Friday afternoon. So we left early, did not finish the program. And then the graduation was the next day, Saturday, and, and we, did, we had to come late after the sunsets. Of course, this was with the knowledge and consent of the class faculty advisor. These were the common problems you will hear from other SDA medical students of yesteryears. That's when Dr. Alfonso P. Roda, who happens to be the first cousin of my late husband, and as many of you know, has been the president of this institution for almost 20 years. When I knew of his dream to open a medical school in PUC, I was all for it. To me, I was thinking of the future medical students not having to worry about Sabbath problems in connection with their classes and exams. In 1981, Dr. Alfonso Roda was our guest in our residence in Tappahannock, Virginia. And the next day, he was to meet Dr. Everett Witzel in Maryland. They were going to meet at our general conference headquarters to meet with the GC president and others regarding the School of Medicine in AUP. But it was a disappointment to know that they were not given an audience by the president of the GC. Aside from they were not invited to attend the session meeting. Later, we were to learn that the GC president convinced his vice presidents to vote no new medical schools in the world field. That big disappointment of Dr. Alfonso Roda was also a disappointment to me. But like him, we did not stop dreaming of having our own medical school. When the GO signal was received by the AUP administration to open a medical school and solicitation of funds started, I did not hesitate to help financially. And when Beth Cassell asked me to help with the solicitation, I consented going with her to Toronto, to Cebu, to Palawan, in Jakarta and other places. With the ups and downs and uncertainty of the final opening that we all have experienced concerning the College of Medicine in AUP, I had been silently watching and praying and hoping that it will still be a reality. Dr. Alfonso Roda had a dream. I too had a dream like his dream that someday this school of medicine will be a reality. I will not want to miss this day. I will not want to miss this weekend. I know I am not dreaming anymore. This weekend is a dream come true for me. I praise God that I have a part in this reality. 
to God be the glory. Thank you. My wife and I are, uh, are thankful to have a part in this program. How we came across this, uh, pro this project came by way of Sister Beth Cassell. You know, my daughter, Roby, brought her son to AUP to have a taste, taste of Philippine culture because, because that grandson of ours was born in the U.S. And during one of our visits to AUP to visit Ruby and her son, we came to be acquainted with the Cassells, who became very close friends to us. They treated us like our, their parents. You know, we are quite uh, advanced in years. I'm 87 years old, my wife is 86, and we still come to the AUP to visit them when they're here. I still drive up to now. And yeah, during one of our visits, during that time, I, passed, I happened to pass by the old, unfinished, field building. And so during our conversation at one last hour, I asked Beth, What's that building, unfinished building, doing there? I've seen it sitting there without any work being done. Oh, I said, she said, we are short of funds for, the, for continuing that building. It so happened that I had over $1,000 in the pocket, you know. And said, I, said, I pulled out this $1,000 and said, will this help start the work again? So they accepted the one thousand dollars I gave her. Two, two weeks later on, we came to visit again my she, uh, my daughter and her son, younger son, and we were invited again to the Cassells for lunch. And after lunch, she said, "Dad, please come with me and let's visit the administration building." You know, the, uh, the, the accreditation committee with general conference came last week, last Friday, and they visited the admin building. He said, please come with me. I didn't know what was going to happen. She didn't tell me why, but I really considered to go with her. And when we go, went to the administration building, she said, you know, the first thing that uh, the accreditation committee noticed when they entered the building, uh, they were our floors, vinyl floors. I said, how much does it cost to change the flooring to something more beautiful, like glazed tiles? Oh, the, she said, I was told that it might take about 100,000 pesos, said. Oh, really? Yeah, that's what they said to me. So she said, give me your bank account. Please, you say, AOB bank account, and I'll send you money by bank to bank. And you'll get it next week. Propos, possibly Friday. We went back to our place in the Olongapu City. I got some money in the bank, and through a video, Banco de Oro, and I sent it to Banco de Oro. They got it the following Friday. On our next visit, they said, as soon as we got the money for the bank, we started to create 
negotiations with the contractor to do the refinishing of the flooring. And he said it could cost 200,000 pesos. But we haggled with him anyway, and it went down to 150. President asked for additional money. I know President. So I said to the guy, well, I'll send you another 50,000 pesos. We can go back to the home depot. And so we are happy. And that's how we got involved in this project. Because without succeeding visits, she opened up this, this project of medical school building. And she said, nobody would you do be willing to work. foot because of one room. And so I said, well, okay, I'll pray about it. Anyway, God has been so good. Because I retired working in the U.S. when I was past retirement age, 68 years old. And uh, one year after I retired working in the U.S., I felt very bored doing nothing whatsoever, except early in the morning I walk for miles, then come back for breakfast and nothing else. We just, my wife and I go, my wife said yes, I would go to shopping mall and just do a little shopping, but lo and behold, we get hooked with the sales. In the and I got tired of that life, so I told the wife, honey, I'm getting bored with life here in the U.S. Please go back into the Philippines because we can be of better help, especially for the Lord's work. You know, we are born third generation Seventh-day Adventists, faithful Seventh-day Adventists, grandparents and parents. Very faithful in Sabbath keeping in stewardship relationship, money wise. And to us, Sabbath keeping is very important. The time came when three of my children went to medical school at the same time. And the problem was, I found out, was this Sabbath problem, Sabbath classes. And the only university which accepted Seventh-day Adventists then was MCU. Because all the older medical students who were in the MCU, they were top notch students. The medical record so and so that they allowed Seventh-day Adventist students to enroll. And so I was forced, we were forced to enroll our three children in MCU, Ruby, uh, Arthur and Ruby in College of Medicine, and our daughter Rona in College of Optometry. They were all enrolled, all expenses paid because of God's blessing. As a result of faithfulness, God has faithfully promised that He will provide the needs of your children as they grow up if you are faithful and true. My mother was very faithful in Taipei, and that's what I inherited from her. Today, whatever amount that comes in, by hand, from rentals in a business we have, or by interest in the bank account, they're all accounted for in paying our tithes and offerings. It's regular, regular. And that's, that's the reason why God has blessed us famously. Furthermore, you may ask why we are still strong and healthy. We have, left, uh, we have lived a healthy lifestyle or our lives. We eat more fruits and vegetables, raw vegetables at times. And we have regular daily uh, devotions to God. Every morning, the first thing in the morning before I do anything else is I have my devotional book. And every night before I go to sleep, 
I have my Bible, uh, regular Bible reading. And so, brethren, I would like to encourage you, be faithful, be faithful and true to our Lord. Because He is willing and able and very faithful in, in his, fulfilling His promise to us that if we remain true and faithful to Him, we are true and unfaithful in keeping the Sabbath, we will be honored too by the Lord. I have worked for 27 years for the US Navy as a civil servant, but I never worked on Sabbath day. Reason why? When they, uh, they accepted me for employment, the first day I did, I asked the recruiting officer, Sir, I am a seventh day Adventist, and I can't work during my Sabbath from sunset Friday to sunset Saturday, but I can work any schedule. And they gladly uh, gave me my request, and so I've never broke the Sabbath. All the 27 years I worked for the US Navy. Thank you. God is good all the time. God is good. Praise the Lord. As I sat down there, I felt so small. But then I realized that God uses ordinary people. I stand here not because of who I am, but because of what God can do to, through me. And as I represent AUP faculty and staff, or AUP family, I am here to testify before all of you and before God with humility in my heart that God indeed uses ordinary people. I was inspired by the message of Dr. Landless, thank you, sir, for giving me a new message on that story. Yes, God did not need their fish. He already had fish on the fire and bread on it. So come, let us dine together. Bring some of the fish. That's very inspiring. To represent a UP family, I felt so humbled and felt so privileged. Our leaders have gone for a long time, leaving us the vision for this project and here we are so blessed to have that privilege of witnessing God's faithfulness God's goodness inspiring in us through the eyes of faith we can trust him and from this time on I believe so that after most of us or some of us and even myself are gone for a long time our children our children's children children of perishing souls whom our medical missionaries have reached will recite god's goodness will testify that if it were not if it had not been through god's goodness through you and me they would not be there standing Praising God. Personally, I've always wanted to be a theologian. So that means I had a passion to reach out for the perishing souls. But that did not come to plan B. I've always wanted to be a missionary to foreign land. But when I became a nurse and assigned and worked at MAMSI and AUP, I didn't have to go to foreign land. Overseas students came to AUP. That tells you of my passion. Passion to reach the perishing souls. And because of that, when the administration, our leaders, announced a desire, the plan to push through the putting up of the College of Medicine, my heart burned with enthusiasm and desire to support even if i'm just like a little boy 
with five loaves of bread and three fishes with him. Believing that no matter how small we have, if we put it in the master's hand, it can grow. It will become what? Great. So that's how I contributed to the College of Medicine program. I am here to represent AUP. For those of you who have just come for this occasion, I want you to know that humble our incomes may be, small our contributions may be, small it may be, but we have given what we have. And I believe that this edifice will testify of how a UP family united in prayer, in supplication, in supporting, in soliciting, and even in prayer of thanksgiving for all of you who have supported us. And we will continue to pray for you that God's blessing will be with you abundantly. Not only financially, but most of all, with that feeling of satisfaction and contentment and peace, knowing that you have done the mission that God has intended for you. And for a UP family, I challenge each one of us. As we have witnessed God's goodness before, we are witnessing God's goodness now. And for sure, through the eyes of faith, we will see, we know, that God will always be good and faithful to us. To all of you who have come to support, I know many have not come, and I know that many are still desiring whatever it is that God has put in your heart. May you respond to the invitation of the Holy Spirit. Remembering the message of Dr. Landless, Jesus invited the disciples. Come, bring your fish, but there's already fish and bread on the fire. May our heart burn with ardent desire to reach for the perishing souls out there. And may we continue to pray for our leaders, for our generous donors and would-be donors here. It doesn't matter how much we bring, as long as Dr. Hadley say, God wants us to avail of the joy, not because of how much we gave, but so that we can say, I have a part in that ministry, that College of Medicine is ours. That is what God wants us. He does not want our money. He wants us to have that pleasure of having participated in His work. May God bless all of us. Thank you and praise the Lord for this day. Good afternoon.
Good afternoon, everyone. I was hoping I was going to be the last speaker this afternoon, uh, so I don't have any time limit, but I guess I have to end in five minutes. Uh, I guess the question for today is, or this afternoon, is how did I get involved? Personally, I have always been involved with AUP. Um, thank you. I was involved with the development or supporting the College of Dentistry in its inception. Um, during the planning of the College of Dentistry, the chair of the uh, approving committee of the CHED was my dean, previous dean at the University of the East, Dr. Lem. And at that time, I was told that they were not going to approve any college of dentistry to be started in the Philippines. There was a moratorium. In fact, they were thinking of closing like three or four dental schools. I told Dr. Lim, I am a Seventh-day Adventist, and you know that. I went to UWE, and I'm proud to say, as uh, Dr. David said, I didn't go to school on the Sabbath. I missed some exams, but I passed my subject by God's help. And Dr. Lin knows that. And I personally guaranteed him and I told him, the Adventist institutions develop the best schools in the world. So if you give a chance to AUP to open up a college of dentistry, I will guarantee you as a friend that it will be a school that will train the best dentists in the Philippines. Ten years later, what do we have? We have probably one, if not the best, school college of dentistry here in the country. Dr. Marisa Rojinas is right there, and we should all applaud her for the good work that she has done for the College of Dentistry. And of course, I not mean to bypass the president and the vice presidents and all of the administrative officers of this great university. You all have done a good job. Now, as I said earlier, how did I get involved with this? Personally, I have been involved in supporting AUP. How did I get involved with the College of Medicine? It was passed on to me. Being elected as the president of Westna for the next three years, this was passed on to me by Ms. Dr. Baginguito and Dr. Miguel. And without no doubt, can you imagine the three presidents of Westna being here this afternoon? Is there any doubt in your mind of the support that a Westna will give to the Adventist University of the Philippines, not to mention the College of Medicine? Now, I was challenged by attorney Beth Cassell. Um, she was mentioning all of these donors that gave or donated to the rooms here at AOP. Is there any undonated room here? I haven't been approached by you. So, no, I'm in trouble. My wife is right there, and she's smiling. But I'm, I'm so gracious and I'm so happy that I have a very supportive wife. See, in my house, I always have the last word. See, she is the CEO in my house, in my household, in my office. I am the COO. You Filipinos, if you don't know what that means, oo lang na oo. Yes and yes. I'm a yes man. So if my wife says, let's do it, I say, yes, we do it. And that's how we have done our support to AUP all these years. I am happy that the College of Medicine has opened up in my lifetime. Aren't you happy? Now, going to school at Enloc, I heard about the plans of opening this college. Dr. Clem Lau mentioned earlier that she wanted to go to school here at AUP College of Medicine. Now she's about ready to retire, and we're starting the College of Medicine. Praise be to God, isn't it? A journey of a thousand miles begins with a single step. This timeless saying from the ancient Chinese philosopher Lao Tzu applies 
and describes the common characteristics of all dreams and ambitions, great and small. As Christians, My best. <laughs> now it works. I don't have to scream and shout. That crucial single step was not ours to make. It was God's to inspire. God's hand and his wisdom metamorphosed into what is now the College of Medicine here at the Adventist University of the Philippines. Above all, we give and praise and honor God. We serve for his unending love and commitment to his work in his own time. This is the fulfillment of a dream that has been in the making for over 35 years. And yet, it should be said that his delay is not a denial because he will provide according to his plan and according to his will. And this, we are forever grateful. We waited patiently. We waited faithfully. And now, our faith has been rewarded. So on behalf of the Adventist University of the Philippines alumni of Western North America, better known as a WESNA, and the 14 chapters that make up its memberships, I am here together with the three presidents, the members, I think we have 13 or 14 of us who are here. Could you please stand up? Because we're just about ready to make a vow here, guys. Come on, all of the Awesna members and friends that are here. Right here. Thank you. We are here to echo the voice of support of our Awesna alumni for their resounding support to AUP COM. Let's push forward onward for God's glory. Mabuhay ang AUP, mabuhay ang COM. God bless us all. In 1977, I was uh, one of the many students who were transferred from old PUC to this campus. And uh, I remember Pastor Carpena was there as a student, and then Sister Lisa also was there. So uh, the leaders of uh, this church today are the product of this institution. 33 years later, I was elected as the president of Alumni National Chapter. 
And as a chairperson, I always uh, look into the report of the treasurer. And the first uh, um, notice from my eyes uh, was that there was 1,250,000, uh, 1,250,000 cash on hand. As uh, the students of the theology, business, and uh, management, I make a motion to, through the, to the, the committee that uh, this money should not be got stuck in the bank. But instead, we are going to put it into the infrastructure of the AUP. Therefore, the first, the first uh, contribution of Philippine uh, PUC, uh, AUP, I should say, AUP uh, National Chapter, was to build this uh, pioneer uh, building now here, pioneer uh, room. It was uh, the collective donations from everybody who was put in the bank for some time, but we were able to put it into a classroom. And the next year, I was elected as one of the board members, and that was the uh, meeting that we had in Tagaytay. And uh, as the collective uh, donations, if you remember that we put our uh, donations in the big, big uh, uh, basket, uh, and yes, uh, then uh, we had the proceed of, uh, I think, more than 1.5 million pesos. And that is the one now designated to the registrar room here, number 111. My friends, uh, uh, I was the student when the late Dr. Roda was given the permit by the OH to open the uh, uh, medical school. But the GC at the time was not very supportive because of the losing proposition in Montemorel. But uh, six years later, uh, six years uh, later of this, uh, when you invited Dr. Handicide in the meeting of uh, Mamsi Sanitarium uh, Banquet in Atlanta, he mentioned that there should be a medical school in Asia for the young people of Asia who, is, who are very much interested in the medical line. Therefore, I believe that the way that we have started in the meeting with Dr. Handicide and Dr. Landless and the people that finally that we are able to inaugurate tomorrow the long, long time dream of many people, not only Filipinos, but Seventh-day Adventists around the world. My message and my appeal, if the small group at the time was able to collect 1.2 million and then later on 1.4 million, may I suggest that every institution in the territory of SSD may put together the funds, whether it is one or two institutions, to donate to College of Medicine. Palapak naman kayo. After we had lunch this afternoon, and Dr. Gayoba and me had a small talk, we are happy because all the obstacles already, uh, already passed, and then we are going to inaugurate the victorious tomorrow. But to maintain the medical school is also is another is another, is another obstacle. So my friends, uh, as I close my uh, five minutes, is it five minutes already? I'm going to close the five minutes, say, my appeal to you, whether it is personal, whether it is collective organization, that you have influence to contribute to the College of, Medica uh, College of Medicine, that let us do it heartily, because the Lord will bless those people who give their hearts in the College of Medicine. God bless. Happy Sabbath, everybody. 
or what's left of the Sabbath at least, the Lord's ways are truly higher than our ways, and His thoughts are truly higher than our thoughts. Who could have imagined that somebody like me, who was baptized a Catholic at Quiapo Church, Catholic Church, and then baptized a Methodist in elementary, studied in UP and became one of the liberal-minded, and then progressed to the UP College of Medicine, UP PGH, the same kind of philosophy, was given a scholarship in Kyoto University, Japan, and observed the Shinto Buddhist way, and then was given, I know the Lord orchestrated all of this, given another scholarship to Israel for my pediatric cardiology to observe the Jewish way, and then finally brought to the Loma Linda University Medical Center. How wonderful is that? His ways are truly beyond our wildest dreams. I was a Baptist founding leader of a little church in Iloilo, where I was teaching in a medical school as one of the pioneer teachers, all the way from 1978. when I had to found my little church. But during that time, I received the fellowship in Israel. The Lord gave me a fellowship in Israel. I was there for four to six months. We were toured all over Israel, and we were brought to the Jordan River. I was with about uh, 30 to 50 other scholars from all over the world, and I was the only Christian. So some were Roman Catholics, some were Jews, and some were atheists. So when we got to the Jordan River, there was no pastor around. So I said, I can't miss this opportunity. So I plunged into the river. And I baptized myself in the name of the Father and of the Son and the Holy Spirit. And I said, wow, I feel so clean. But you know, the Lord was not yet finished with me. Because after a few years, when I had a night retreat and revival, it's okay, at the Baptist church that I had founded, my prayer was, and with all sincerity, I asked the Lord to break me into a thousand pieces and mold me back into the image He wanted me to become. Because my feeling was, I would like to follow Him as He directs, not Doris Mendoza. And so, after a few weeks to months, I think, some of you have heard this a million times, but I cannot help but share it because it is the truth. And if you remember, we're supposed to honor God through our talents, our time, our treasures, our temples, and our testimony. And I cannot do any better. So I got sick. Wow. One after another in a period of two and a half years. First, a brain stroke which I think was uh, to erase the negative things or the wrong things that I already knew from all of the exposures I have had. And then cancer of the breast and then cancer of the uterus, which had to be removed because I was not using them anyway. <laughs> the Lord knows. And during that time, as I was recuperating, I think you can proceed. Give it to me. Give it to me. I ask the Lord to continue. To continue using me. And this was when I found a little book. 
called The Legacy, the same book that uh, Beth showed. And this led me to the Loma Linda Medical Center. This was a good thing because by then, I would now understand what my Adventist medical students were fighting for. That's why I always mention this. My Adventist medical students taught their teacher something eternal. Can you say amen to that? Amen. They didn't realize it. But they gave what they had. And they taught me lessons I would not have learned otherwise. So when I was sick, I prayed to the Lord, Okay, Lord, I am undergoing the process of breaking. And He spoke to me in a dream. And the dream was in Hezekiah. And the chapter was talking to me directly. Like Hezekiah, I thought I was serving the Lord. I was the founding chair of a Baptist church. I was the founding president of a praise and worship group. I was the drummer of the praise and worship group. Something we cannot do in our church now. But the Lord told me that these things were not enough. So this dream coming in scrambled letters and uh, numbers was about Hezekiah's dream. And God told him. So I knew God was talking to me. Because believe it or not, I was a Baptist Sunday Bible teacher, but I didn't know the story of Hezekiah. That's not unusual. Because in other churches, you just teach what you want to teach. Book of John, Matthew, Luke, Hezekiah, Kings. You don't go to those chapters of the Bible. So first time I heard this, and then God said, I have heard your prayer and I've seen your tears. I will heal you. I claimed it. He indeed healed me and he showed me greater things. I saw this book, The Legacy. When I was well enough to go to the mall, because now I was not anymore uh, compromised immunologically, because I had my chemotherapy, my radiation therapy, I couldn't go to the malls. So when I was better, where do you think I went first? To the SM mall, of course, but to the bookstore. And I found that, and it led me to make a long story short, to the Loma Linda University, a Seventh-day Adventist institution. There I met Dean Roger Hadley. I went to his office one day in March 2007. I asked him for curriculum in religion. Would you believe that, Dr. Gayoba? For my West Visayas State University College of Medicine. Because back then, I was already thinking a doctor should not only treat the body, but should also treat the perishing soul. And he gave me those things. And then I go, went through the program of the International Heart Institute. I went to Loma Linda, actually, to learn about pediatric heart transplantation. And I met the chancellor then who, what do you know, is now the president. And he has been sending to us faculty to help in our development. How good a God do we serve? And so I went there, a student of pediatric heart transplant. I came out spiritually heart transplanted. Wonderful. How God used a Gentile like me to become an Israelite in heart. And so, I had my spiritual birthday on November 27, 
three days short of my 60 years of age. So it's never too late, my brothers and sisters in Christ. Never too late to teach an old dog new tricks. And so one day, the president called me by telephone. This was during his first year of presidency. If I could come to AUP and help in the planning of establishing a medical school, which I did. And the words of this Christian order said, if God tells you to serve somewhere, serve. Trust him and take the risk. Dog Bachelor also said, sometimes to reach great goals, you must take a bold step of faith. After much prayer and kneeling, like Dog in his experience, I believe God was leading me. So I went on saying, forsaking all, I trust him. I will say that again. Forsaking all, I trust him. My author, my script writer, my director, and my executive producer. Because this is his story that I'm telling, not my own. So I accepted God's call. I had a meeting with Dr. Gayoba and the Mamsi people. Dr. Belen Rajagukguk was there. And we sealed the covenant, so to speak. They trusted that I could be part of this triumvirate to establish a God-ordained medical school to produce doctors who are modeled after the great physician himself. It's the only medical school I knew that would do such a thing. There are some of the faculty that we started training with the coming of Drs. Zhang, Barry Taylor, Dr. Thomas, Dr. Ben Lau. You could recognize your faces there. And then, President Ted Wilson came over in May to bless this and dedicate this structure. And also, the people led by Dr. Hardy came from the IBE. We had a signing of the MOU with the Batangas Medical Center leadership for our clinical training of the first year, second year, third year, and fourth year medical students. And in God's perfect time, that was December 19, 2014, we received the tidings of great joy. And I had to tell all of my faculty, email all of them, that at long last, God has allowed us to get this dream fulfilled. Hallelujah, in his own time. Now the College of Medicine is going to follow the CHED and the World Health Organization mandate to produce the five-star physician who is a clinician, a teacher, a researcher, a social mobilizer, and administrator manager. But we will do more than this. We will produce the five-star physician class, a physician missionary. You agree, Dr. Landless. We have to rescue the perishing souls and the bodies that come with it. When we train our medical students to heal, we also train them to do as Jesus did. When Jesus treated the sick, he said, pick up your mat and walk. And then he said later on, Go and sin no more. Isn't that a wonderful, wonderful goal to achieve? And so, my beloved, we are in the midst of making history. The AUP College of Medicine, thanks to all of our donors and supporters, our prayer warriors, all of us, even our critics, because they stimulate us to strive better. Thank you also personally to Dr. Pastor Gulfan. When we were downhearted, 
Dr. Miriam and I saw him in that church service the Sabbath right after the denial of the Ched. He was the only person upbeat. He said, we cannot give up. And I agree with him because this is God's work and we cannot fail because he is on top of it all. So I part with this from 1 Timothy 1.12. And I thank God, Christ Jesus our Lord, who had enabled me despite all my weaknesses and sins and medical disasters. For that he counted me faithful, putting me into the ministry. And so, he who began a good work in you and me will perfect it until the day of Christ Jesus. Do you believe that, my beloved? Yes. Amen. To God be the glory. We thank God for the goodness, uh, for His goodness to us. And uh, this afternoon, we have heard the testimonies of uh, our friends, our donors, our uh, guests. And uh, we, I'm sure that we are all encouraged to move forward and do the work that uh, God has entrusted to us. This time, we're going to listen to the closing remarks of uh, the president of uh, this university, Dr. Francisco Gayoba. And uh, later we'll have uh, after him and uh, another person will sing our closing song, the uh, Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Thank you. Again, it's a pleasure to welcome all of you to this series of meetings and that will end tomorrow, and that is the inauguration. When I was listening there to how the Lord has blessed us and hints of challenges and difficulties that were interspersed with the thanksgiving, I want to tell you honestly, I feel tired. So tired. As the president of the university, presiding, leading the team who worked hard with all of you the past few years, I don't know why I felt so tired. Maybe, you know, many of you are aware of the challenges that we faced the past few years. I was not prepared to be the president of the university and the university that was facing so many, many challenges when we took over. In fact, the challenge of founding the medical school had a counter story at the same time when we had to find the money to build the structure, recruit people, prepare curriculum, the curriculum and the class, all of those things. At the same time, there were other challenges that the university faced that sort of delayed our work and make things complicated. We had to undo a lot of issues that we inherited related to land. And in fact, the land development was connected to the plan for the College of Medicine because the scheme to fund the medical work program was expected to come from all of these land deals that later on the board had to rescind and undo. And all those years, the people involved, both outside the campus and both people who were still working on campus, were undermining the work of starting the medical school. You know, many times I meet with my team and I want to say the Lord has blessed this university with a wonderful leadership team. Dr. Miriam is here. Dr. Miriam, will you please stand? We owe a lot 
to her. You know, the beginning years, when Dr. Uh, Jimmy Lu Castro was there, but it was Dr. Miriam, Dr. Carpiso. Is Dr. Carpiso here? Ruben Carpiso. She and Dr. Miriam and Dr. Didi, who joined later, were the only ones who were making the, the materials. And come to think of it, they were coming from business, and they have to submit documents <laughs> to the Technical Committee on Medical Education. We were so naive when we started. And, I, and this afternoon, I want to say that we, want, we should thank the Lord that in spite of the limitations of your administrators, our weaknesses, the Lord bless. And we can only praise the Lord. We did not know much, Dr. Makaya. Many times I cannot understand what I was doing. I called Dr. Makaya how to do this. You know, there were so many technicalities, details in medical program that as president, I had to make a decision what to do. I didn't know much about it. It's good Loma Linda people was there, Dr. Jang was there. Whenever I visit every year, I consult them. What about this? Dr. Taylor uh, Barry was coaching me on this, on that. The Lord has used so many people to make this dream come true. You know, the Apostle Paul says, the, you, the Lord uses earthen vessels. That in spite of our limitations, we did not know what to do. We had to supervise the building of this structure in a time when we had to declare 46 million pesos in loss because one of the buildings in this campus was not properly done. How can we get, how can we rise above that reputation and make sure that we do it right? Mr. Galang, Sir Galang, the Lord blessed you. He is a good partner in development to work with a team of people who are honest. Dr. Borromeo, Thank you so much. Our financial people always, I think, had to pray longer than we did. Because when they look at, the, where's the money with all of this? I think Dr. Bromeo talked about it. And yes, they too work by faith to make this happen. Don't forget, friends, the challenge, the internal challenge that we are experiencing even until now. We had to build this building even though we didn't have enough money. But if we wait for the money to come in, our application would never be approved because one of the requirements is have a building first, then we will approve. So when do we have the approval? When we have enough money? There was a struggle in this campus even until now because with the limited resources that we have, we have to slice the pie. And even though the resources are limited, the university was already operating on a shoestring. A university such as this, 5,000 students, only four vice presidents. I, f I feel envious when I go to colleges in the United States when they have 2,000 students, seven vice presidents. And so much stuff, and yet we had to build the College of Theology. We had to finish the College of Theology. We had to build dorms. We had to build this building. And the deans the President's Council, and don't forget our board. Sorry, Pastor Manias is not here because there's another college celebrating their 50th year. We have to remember Pastor Manias in our board, who also, in faith, made this possible. Are our deans here? Are the members of the President's Council here? Will you please stand? Thank you so much for sharing this vision. Mahirap mag... Oh, I'm sorry. It's very hard to slice the pie when the pie is not an American pie, but a Filipino bibingka. Uh, let me, uh, you know the Filipino rice cake, only this small, the bibingka. It's nice to have a slice the pie when the slices are big and the crust thick. But when you have to slice the bibingka so small, with only the banana leaves left when you slice it. But yet the Lord guided in faith. I want to thank the leaders of our alumni associations. Thank you so much for support. They were struggling for a while because the counter propaganda of, that we're trying to resolve of the people involved in the land deals, which we have, we're still facing cases even now. I'm a criminal, you know. But in spite of the counter propaganda and the critics that Dr. 